I just found a way to scrap almost anything from the web for free with the deep seek R1. I can't take in your L, ask the LLM to grab the data that I need and it will spit it out in a beautiful JSON file. No messy code, no headaches for searching which class should I detect inside the page. So in today's video, I will show you where to get the DeepSeek R1 for free, how this code exactly work and how to modify it and two awesome examples to see this code in action. So stick around because in the next few minutes, I will show you how it's done. Usually when we're scrubbing a new website or crawling a new website, we have the link for it or the page and they have some code that will handle the web scrubbing and we save the data in a structure format and save in a file like JSON or database or XLS or documentation, whatever, what format you want to use it in. But the problem is, as an example, let's say I wanted to crawl gamespot.com and get the top 10 article that's popular today. The problem will start when you hit control U on your Chrome or whatever equivalent for it on your browser, you will see this file. And this is the issue. This is basically the source of the pages, it's just HTML code. And it's very long. And there is a lot of code here you want to see. The only way to do this is you hover on the title, hit click inspect, and you open it, you'll find, for example, I'm lucky here that I get the tag and the URL. And if I inside it, I will find the title. I need to copy the card item title and then I copy these two classes and inside my I will target them to extract both the URL which is over here and the title and save it inside JSON format. But with an AI, you will give it basically the entire website page or the HTML from beginning to end and ask it anything that you want. I want to extract the article. I want to extract the URL only, the same banal. I want to get the main articles of the website, which is over here. I want to get the link for the other pages inside the website. You can ask it anything that you want and it will extract it for you. And you can request it in any format that you want. And this is basically how powerful is scrubbing or crawling with an AI. It saves you a lot of time. You don't have to sit down and search for inside every single div and where is the class and it, it will automatically handle this for you the most important question inside this video how i am doing this for free i'm using the deep seek r10 for free in open router there is a company called shots and i don't know how they doing it they're providing the deep seek r1 for free the serverless ai compute company which is amazing that you can run even deep seek r1 for free and all you have to do, go ahead to your keys and create a new ABI key over here. And you can use also the Gemini models from Google. It's also available in Open Router. There is multiple free models, but I'm using the DeepSeek R1 because it's an extremely good model. Yeah, it's a slightly slow, but first of all, this is the DeepSeek R1 that we're talking about. It's a reasoning model, not a regular LLM. And second, it's for free. We have the max context length is 164K and the max output is the exact same. So it's a plenty of tokens that we can send to this model. So let's see it in action before I explain the entire code. I will hit run to run my entire Bison file and here it requesting enter URL to analyze. You can here set in URL that you want. For example, I'm gonna put the gamespot.com and I hit enter. And when you hit enter, it will ask you for another question. What would you like to know about this page? If you hit enter without writing anything, and it will automatically look to the default query that I have put inside the code, which is over here. Summarize the main points of the content and extract key information. So you can look, for example, here in the game spot. I want to get top 10 articles information, for example, and I will hit enter. And it will start crawling, came back with the script complete. And right now it sent it to the LLM so it can give me the information that I want and I requested inside my question. And boom, we have top 10 articles that I got title and the URL. And you will actually find it inside the LLM response with the name of the website. Here I have the game spot over here. And you can see here the metadata 
the response, the articles, title, and URL in a JSON format. Not only that, but inside analyze results, you will find also another file with the same website name. Inside it, you will find more details, like what kind of website that we crawled, the title of the current page, where we did it, the context links that we sent, the model that we used, the query that I bought inside the terminal and the prompt that we send to the LLM and, and where is the response file from the large language model. And finally, the, consec, the context that we have inside our page. So it's not all of it, of course, because this is kind of slightly weird to save the entire page inside the JSON file. So I just got a little bit of it, not all of it. And that's how basically we work. We can, I can show you another example for something more useful. I'm going to be using the live bench.ai. I wanted to show you one more example for real stuff like amazon.com, but it feel more illegal to use it. And I don't want to get into trouble creating this video. So what I'm going to do, I will run my file once more. And here it asking enter the URL to analyze. I will put the live bench.ai and I will ask to give me, I will ask, give me in LLMs at coding. We'll hit enter and wait. Ask it to be the top 10 for coding because by default, it's not organized by coding average. It's more about the global average. But the cool thing, it understand that it have to look to the coding average and came back with that detailed list of the top 10 LLMs at coding. And of course, you can see it here in the LLM response. The first one is the O3 minis and the GPT-4 0.5 and the Sonnet 3.7 thinking and the QWQ 32B and so on until we reach the Quinn 2.5 max. And you can find here, of course, the metadata file about the live bench and what kind of model that we used and what I ask. You can use this script with any website that you like and it will get you information that you want of course you can feel free to modify the code however it you like but make sure that you don't hit the max token limits when you're using any LLM that you have you can of course modify this logic to work with a local LLM like using Olama and you can use any large language model that you can run on your GPU. I'm going to start explaining my code. And if you want to skip this part, just look at the timestamp and skip right ahead to the other bar that you want to see. I am starting with setup of the most important thing inside the code, the variables. I have here, for example, the, the DeepSeq R10, that's for free, the ABI key for the open router, which I'm using to, to get access to the DeepSeq for free. I have here the default query and I will show you why I did it like this. You can actually write in the terminal what you want to do and, and the AI will handle it. But if you didn't, the default query will basically be sent. I have here max content size, which, which for me, which was a mistake I did in the first time, it will avoid hitting the limits of the AI. Basically, if you have a context limits of for example, 100,000 token, for example, you will avoid this kind of stuff by sending a certain amount of content size. And I have here the directories that I will save inside it my metadata, which the first one is basically what website that I search for, for example, the WebDev Arena, the model that I have used, what kind of query, the prompt, the LLM response file, where it is, it's inside here, it's inside here. And it will show me the inside response in a JSON format, which is basically just amazing. I feel like the metadata file is important to be separated from the JSON format. You can take this and put it inside your database if you wanted to. Back to our code. I have here the importing, uh, importing from the library, which is I am relying heavily on the crawl for AI. It's have a, a lot of stuff, but I don't want to explain it here. You should check out the documentation. And I have here multiple function. The first one is getting the user query from the terminal. Basically, you will sit down, uh, put the website URL inside the terminal and what you want to do with this website. Basically, what you search inside the URL that you have sent. The second one, there's a query LLM. This is will handle sending the information that we will have to open router and get back the response. 
It's very long, but extremely detailed and very flat code, so can anyone understand it? My third function is the crawling website itself. It takes the URL of the website or the page that you want to crawl or get the information from, and it will look at and get you back the entire HTML. Number four, which is the saving result. This is basically will get you the saving the file for the metadata over here, the analysis results. It's kind of overkill if you want to not to use it. You, you just have to remove it from the code, but I feel like it's a good idea to keep track of what you crawled. And number five, saving the LLM response. So it's basically the most important thing inside the whole operation that will take the output of the LLM that we're using and save everything inside one file. And finally, we have the main function will put everything together that will look to the user URL and the query in the terminal, analyze the prompt, start to crawling the website itself, hand handling back the content and send it back to the LLM with the max content size that we have. You can actually increase it as much as you can, but it will be slightly slower. And you also get some messages in the terminal showing you what, what kind of steps that we are right now at. And it will send the entire thing to the query LLM to analyze the entire thing and send you back the response. And it will tell you at the end that it saved everything here inside this kind of file. If anything went wrong, it will show an error. Or if you hit control and C, it will abort the entire operation. And this is basically the script entry input to invoke the entire thing. And this is basically a quick recap for my entire code to show you exactly how it works in the back end so you understand what's going on. So you can modify it if you want to. Why I don't recommend using a paid model? Just to stick with the free one. First of all, that you will send a lot of token to analyze to large language model to give you what you want and look to what information that it will extract. So that will cost you a lot of consuming token. Second thing, when I was testing this code yesterday, for some reason, I don't know why, I used the cloud three OBS. I have no idea why. It cost me almost 10 cents, just one try. One try, it sent a few tokens to basically get the information for, from. It only less than 4,000 tokens. So if I continue using this thing, that will cost me a lot and it will pile up very quickly. So stick with the free one. And before I end this video, I would like to know, guys, what you want me to work on next. Do you have a certain thing that you want me to build and show you inside my channel how it's built or find you an a creative way of using large language model in any case? Just let me know down below in the comments. I would like to work on this kind of stuff for you. For example, agents, they want me to show you how to build a full stack website using large language model. And about building with AI, I'm actually writing right now an ebook from zero to basically to advanced level of how you can use large language model as a coding assistant, going on details, how it started how it's right now, what is the best tools, what is the limitation, the prompt techniques that you can use while coding, and what is the basic setup for every single situation using AI coding. And of course, I am talking inside this book about how it's important to understand what is the AI giving you so you don't end up with issues later on. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Everything that you need from this video you will find down below in the description. So please hit the like and subscribe. And thank you for the 6,000 subscriber. And thank you for watching once more and see you in the coming video.